Cat, it's Maximus here. This is going to be a quick review of this Harbor Freight Warrior octagonal knife. These are, and I did a little bit of homework, these tools actually originated in the textile fabric industry, leather works, that type of stuff. And they are just rotary knives in order to make long cuts, straight cuts, just a bit easier and a bit quicker, particularly through tougher materials. So they're used in all sorts of industries. There are very professional models ranging from two to three hundred dollars. These are a knockoff of those after patents started running out on rotary cutters. They started making styles. So I've been using this skill. It seems that skill is one of the early companies of actually making a knockoff and uh, it's actually turned out to be just fine. I use it many times in videos. So now uh, Works and Harbor Freight Warrior, and actually let me show you, this is indeed a uh, just a slightly modified version of the WORX brand. And I would certainly, I would recommend the Works brand because you can get it uh, pretty cheap and it's just a little bit easier to use beside because it doesn't have this big loop here, which I think just really gets in the way. This thing normally is 40 bucks on the shelf. It is a Warrior, so you can dig up 25% off coupons, which I guess gets you it for 30 bucks. Um, 1.5 amp hour battery, but it comes with a microscopic 400 milliamp hour charger. Uh, so even though it has a tiny battery, this thing still takes like four hours to charge when it's all run down. Here, let me uh, show you here. Here we are with the uh, Works brand here, and if we rotate it around, we can see that very specifically the Harbor Freight, it really is the exact same molding as this unit here. And what really shows you isn't just this part, but if we go around to the other side here, we can see this slot, and that is precisely the same as it is on the Warrior. And you can see the Works one just has this upper handle. So these types of cutters, uh, the professional units uh, don't really have the same type of safeties because they are made for fabrics which fold up, so they actually have much wider gaps. So the other modification on these is the fact that this whole jaw opening is just much narrower, just so it ends up being safer because obviously this type of saw can be are pretty dangerous. And a quick note, the reason it's an octagonal blade is because each little bump kind of acts like a tooth. It's not a saw blade, you don't want that kind of aggressive tooth, but the little bumps just help it along and if you have any kind of tougher areas they kind of uh, work their way through it a little bit better. And then of course the thing at the bottom is a little saw guide and they call it self-sharpening. It's semi-self-sharpening, it's actually cutting metal, but if the edge gets rolled over a little bit that will push it back although that doesn't help if it's on the front side. Of course, on professional units, they have various blade scrapers and other things to keep the blades uh, together. One quick last criticism about this Warrior, and I, this is what kind of annoyed me, extra blades included, and then two cutting, uh, product includes two cutting blades. But this is a little bit strange because the product comes with the blade, it comes with a consumable, and then it says extra blades, or you get a max a total of two. So it came with an extra blade, not two extra blades, including a consumable so you can use the tool is not considered extra. It's just is coming with a consumable accessory. Anyway, real quick, I will do a quick tear down of this at the end of the video, um, but I did want to show that the blade design on both the skill and the reason they put on uh, that little slot in the back of the warrior is so you can use two screwdrivers. These aren't impacted in hard or anything, but uh, you do want those screws pretty tight. So the blade system on these is indeed the same. So they are copying what Skill did here. I'm not sure if the professional cutters use that two slot design. I can say that Makita actually has a $120 version, which is pretty expensive. And so replacing blades on either one of those. I did just want to, sh it is just a pretty easy matter of loosening it and then working the blade out. Uh, and of course, I did want to show that the skill is a higher quality unit than the, this Warrior is. Just the spindle, you can see how it's been, it's nice and bright and polished and kind of a little bit cheesier there. Of course, there's tighter tolerances between the plastic and the spindle, so less crud gets in there. So those would be some of the differences which set aside even the skill versus the Warrior, even though the scale was only like 40 or 50 bucks when it was on the shelf. So of course, these what, didn't have that. Th these can of course be used as fabric cutters or anything else, or cutting leather or any of that type of stuff, and that's what they're handy for. The operation of this Warrior is a little bit annoying. These all have safety switches. The scale is, you know, I took it apart and I just removed the safety lockout. Ergonomics are great on the scale. You just grab it, 
start cutting like that. Even with the lockout, you can you were able to hit it with in either side, so it's pretty natural just to push it over. It just was even more convenient like this. Super great ergonomics, and it seems that the works and warrior version here. Uh, it's like they didn't actually buy this product and knock it off. They kind of looked at it and then looked at the professional ones and came with their own version. Just not quite as elegant. That's about the best way to say it. Ergonomics just quite aren't as nice. Uh, there is a much larger grip diameter here. Small things, you know, nice tapers here on the skill where they're just just a bit more chunky. The skill even ha is actually designed to operate just slightly offset, so it's not so close to the surface and makes it a little bit easier. Uh, it would be looking at it just like this. Where the warrior is just made basically just flat, and so what can happen is, is as you're, if you're cutting longer material, it starts hitting the bottom of the handle, which is a little bit annoying. It also means that you can't get quite flush uh, with the surfaces if you're doing something where you're maybe going along the edge there. Anyway, they work great for this, except for this is such a weird system because this was just a mechanical lockout, works normally. This uses a weird latch system, so you have a safety switch here. If you don't press, if you press this without holding the handle, you don't get any action. This is a latch, which means it's an electronic button, but when you press it, it acts like it stays on. And then to turn it off, you have to actually release that. So part of their idea was that you'd choke it up and you'd grab it like that, but that's the ergonomics like that just or terrible because this handle is pushing your fingers too far back. As we can see on this skill, you would put one finger up in front of the trigger and just allows you to get a really nice purchase on that. So this thing just is terrible. I mean, they cut pretty good and because of the rotary action, uh, they make pretty smooth clean cuts. Although this of course doesn't sound quite as robust as the skill. Both of these units do use ball bearings on the blade side. So the blade is held pretty rigid, but it is rubber sealed on the skill. Oh. It's surprising even through cardboard. Let's actually fold that up and cut a thicker piece and see how it bogs down. I just charged this till green light before the video. Wow, that is not particularly happy. The skill has a little bit more power. Here, let's try eight layers. Fold it over so we have eight layers in there. Watch your fingers when you're doing this. Okay, that was it. Oh, just got it to battle through there. So that's the absolute limit. I actually got it to stall out on eight layers of cardboard. Just for giggles, let's see how the skill does. And this skill I've had for a few years. This battery's had a lot of charge cycles and is aged, so it's not going to be as strong. That should be obvious. The skill does have more torque, and it has an older battery. So, of course... Uh, basically, this was a knockoff of a professional unit, and then this is a knockoff of a knockoff, which makes it particularly bad. Well, let's see if it will do what it's intended to do. I'll be reviewing this sim. Super thick Doyle packaging here on this adjustable end wrench. Yep, Harbor Freight did come out with end wrenches. Uh, this thing just sucks because you can't, it's so funky. So if you do this motion where you get it started, once you're done cutting, you got to kind of really release it and then... The thing's loose in your hand, promotes you to want to drop it more. It's really a terrible design. Okay, so it'll work on this. I thought it was going to bog down a little bit worse. At least it's uh, holding its own against that. So, it will work as a packaging cutter. So, anyway, I think that uh, this... And X works counterpart aren't as good as the skill, but for you know, if you get a coupon, I don't think this is worth 40 bucks, but if you get a coupon at Harbor Freight for 30 bucks, there's really not a lot of these cutters, especially since skill stopped producing theirs, which is unfortunate because that was actually the, the nice, really ergonomic, pretty well designed version of these for a budget price. Uh, they just weren't selling enough of them so. For the rotary cutters, I mean, you either have the works or the warrior, and I'd still recommend the works just because you don't have this, this oversized loop. 
Although, you know, from Harbor Freight, you can get your extended warranty, and then, you know, you can have this for, like, two years or something, and if anything breaks, they'll uh, end up replacing it. I guess the biggest bonus for me um, is that the blades are going to be compatible with the skill, so this is really... Uh, uh, I end up paying 30 bucks to buy two blades for my uh, skill, and I'll probably keep this thing as a backup. So anyway, that was kind of the end of the review. I'm going to do a quick teardown just to take a look inside. The way the skill works is a double reduction, planetary reduction, and then they use a third uh, stage reduction, which is a small bevel gear to drive the blade. This is a little bit different, and it uses a triple planetary reduction. And uh, I think it's not quite as good for the space that they're in. doesn't allow them to use quite as large a motor as what the skill has. The skill is moving some of the reduction down lower into the gearbox, giving them space to have a longer motor in the same body diameter. And that's one of the reasons why this has a little bit less power is just because uh, not as good a design. But I'm going to go ahead and tear it down here, and we'll just make this one of my longer videos. Not super long, but... Uh, I haven't done one of these integrated review and teardowns in a while. Just to quickly point out something, the skill has glass fiber reinforced nylon body. The screws are very tight and you really got to be on them. But this thing, you just, these screws feel like they're oiled or something. There's this basic, almost no. And there we go. I hate those little holes that aren't big enough for screwdriver tips. But these screws are feel like they're just barely torqued in there at all, which is disconcerting because, of course, they're going to get loose quickly. You have nine screws. What's also annoying is that you have to take apart this handle because it's sandwiched over the top of the main body here. And let's just work this apart. Those screws are really loose in there. That's really a pretty scary. Oh, I got to cut this sticker. And I'll correct myself. The charger is a 500, is a half amp, 500 milliamps. It's still just ridiculously small. And uh, there's our unit. Nothing too special here. This is our little trigger right here. And actually, it isn't, it's really cheap. It's not even a micro switch. Get some light in there. It's just two metal prongs that touch right on the bottom of the circuit board. So that's a little disconcerting. Just because it's not the most reliable connection. That You know, these metal tines actually are hitting and then sliding. So they're actually having a wear or grinding action. So that's only going to activate so many times until those pads wear out and then you have to get in there and put some bubbles of solder on those pads in order to keep it working. We can also see the safety switches the same way. In that skill they're actually integrated micro switch units so big difference there. These are the two pads that you would just uh, unscrew this little prong from this button if you didn't want to have a hole in the top of the unit. Just remove that prong entirely and then just take a little piece of wire or actually just a big glob of solder and put it over the top of those two pads. That way you can just grab it and when you grip the handle, uh, it would be easier to use. Because you can just pick it up, grab, squeeze the handle, cut with it and let go of the handle and not have to worry about this extra button. It's just really cheesy. What is kind of interesting is, I mean, the molding's terrible. This battery uh, is, you know, taped to the controller board as well. It's an integrated charge board. Um, although I will say that they use these super proprietary, these are just super microscopic, like 16th inch concentric circle power plugs. These are like the hardest style ones to find, and they're microscopically thin. If this were ever able to fall, were to fall with this plugged in, that thing would snap off in a heartbeat. Uh, just terrible. But they have this odd value added. I don't know if it's value added, but... Uh, probably in testing, just it would not cut at all using bushings. Not be known as bronze or those copper gold colored uh, uh, sliding bearings. So on the output gear, there's actually a ball bearing. It does indeed have a ball bearing on the spindle. It's not sealed, rubber sealed like the skill. And uh, this is actually what really surprised me is that in there. There you go. Now you can see the little glints. That's a roller needle bearing. That's actually not... <laughs> And I was like, why on earth would they have gone through the expense of putting in all these rolling bearings? And it's just power delivery. They probably in testing just said it was cheap, cheaper for them to put in rolling bearings in order to get better, you know, lower resistance and better power delivery than it was to try to design it to uh, have a bigger motor. 
And on the skill, what I'm talking about is this gear and this gear and this warrior are the same size. There's no reduction. All that's doing is just transferring power that's going this way to power that's going that way. On the skill, this gear is smaller than the output gear, so that it's actually used as a reduction stage. So that's kind of a, uh, an interesting choice. It is also interesting, the spindle, the bearing is just screwed in, so it actually prevents the spindle from wanting to slide back and forth, just like they did here. They just have three screws, and just the edge of the screws holding the edge of the bearing in. Annoying to try to take this apart, because all this in the back end is just being glued in there. All right, and this is just finishing it up. So the stages are symmetrical on the first two. It doesn't matter if one's stacked on top of the other. So you can't really get, really, you can't assemble this gearbox wrong. That's the easiest way to put it. Plastic gears on the first two stages, they are metal in the skill. Actually, I believe the first stage may be plastic in the skill, but I can't remember. It's been a while. Only the final stage where it has the highest amount of torque are they using uh, steel gears. They're on slightly larger pins, so you can. There wouldn't be any way to say upgrade the these littler gears. Oddly, on the motor, it is a steel gear, but it's because it uses this little D drive, and so it would have had to been steel. Otherwise, the little motor spindle itself uh, would have just stripped it out. And then, it, of course, uses what's known as a double D. When they have a round hole with just a uh, angle on one side, like this gear, it kind of looks like the outline of the letter. Uh, whoop. Of the letter D so that's why they call them D drives and since that's a D drive when they put flats on both sides of a round it's just called a double D that's how the, whoop, that's how the output spindle is driven is through that double D and then it has just a little bearing this gear surprisingly enough has a is pressed on to this through spindle and the reason they do that is so they don't have to cut D's on it they just put the spindle through the bearing and then press the gear on so but this is never the kind of tool that you would ever run to the point of wearing out the bearing. And if you did, you wouldn't be re putting in the effort to replace the bearing. But it's still kind of interesting to see that the, they've done that. So anyway, this cutter I think will work for, you know, some people a lot. Actually, I've had a few comments about this thing. It is cheap. And since skill kind of canceled theirs, there just isn't a lot of these cutters just because there's only so much market for them. So it's... This and the, this, the Works brand, Warrior brand one, is one of the cheapest ones that you can get. Unfortunately, it's even cheaper than the skill. So if you have the ability to go on eBay and find one of those old skills, uh, I'd recommend that because it uses an 18650 just like that. So if the skill battery dies, you can just open it up and get a new battery. And even on Amazon, they sell 18650s that are already pre-soldered with leads on them. Otherwise, this is one of the best bets, but it just it is not as good as the skill, and as we've seen, doesn't quite have the same power. And uh, I guess that's about the end of this video. It's gone on for long enough. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and supporting the Caddis Maximus channel. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.